Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, I've got another drone to show you today. I have the uh, MJX uh, Bugs 18. Uh, MJX makes a good quality drone in the bargain drone category. Uh, I have uh, always been pretty happy with, uh, with some of the products they're putting out. Uh, I expect that you'll be able to find this drone uh, between probably $200 and $300 on you know, the various websites. Uh, Banggood uh, it probably primarily will be the place that you find it and others. So what is it? It is a uh, folding GPS uh, stabilized camera drone. And the, the camera, it's got a three axis gimbal. It will shoot in 4K. Uh, and I've found that typically MJX, uh, while it's not you know the quality that we see on say a DJI drone, it's good quality. It's good enough, I guess is what I would say, in the price category that it competes in. Uh, now the big thing that this guy uh, brings to the table is it's said to have a three kilometer range. Well, I don't know about you, I am never going to fly a drone like this three kilometers, but if we can get a good solid kilometer, a good solid connection with it uh, for 1K, that is a huge win. So uh, yeah, let's quit messing around. Let's get this guy out of the box and take a look at it. Okay, the Bugs 18 Pro, quick look at the box. It says uh, 4K right there, electronic image stabilization, gimbal stabilized, which means it's a three axis gimbal, uh, bottom vision sensors, and it is a GPS drone. Uh, nothing much there, EIS, has the uh, QR codes for the uh, various uh, apps uh, for this product. Uh, the X Drone app, and there is the Apple one that I'll be using, but it's also got the Google Play uh, QR code. And yeah, nothing but pictures on that side, so let's quit messing around, let's get it open. And as usual, they give us a good uh, suitcase style uh, bo uh, a, uh, case for the drone. And I appreciate this. This is a, a good compact uh, little case, it looks like to me. Good handle on there. Uh, double pull zipper, let's open it up. And there's some stuff in the top part here. I'm quite sure that's probably extra props, screwdrivers, etc. We'll look at that in a second. Uh, let's uh, let's pull this open and there's the drone itself uh, and yeah it looks like they gave me a couple of batteries so that's great let's uh, let's just go ahead and pull the drone out and yeah I mean if you're looking at size let me pull open the uh, the arms on this guy if you're looking at size I'm gonna say it's about the same size uh, as a Mavic Air 2 or so, uh, SD card slot right there on the side. And here's the downward facing sensors. It looks like you have a couple of infrared sensors uh, plus a, an optical sensor there. Uh, and so yeah, then there is the gimbal cover uh, and it gives you instructions for, for uh, pulling that gimbal cover off. We'll look at that in a second. Let's go ahead and look at the rest of the drone. Ventilation right there, nothing so much to look at at the top, pretty normal. Not a lot on this side either. Uh, and on the front, it bears mentioning there's no sensors here. There's no obstacle avoidance, etc. You wouldn't expect that in this uh, price range of a drone. And it does say uh, 4K EIS there on the side. 4K 30 frames per second, it says, so that's good. That's a good thing. Uh, let's go ahead and pull that, uh, that gimbal cover off and see if we can do like it says and press down and pull forward. Well, maybe. I feel like I'm pulling the uh, gimbal off. There we go. Uh, so there, there's that, uh, there's that three axis gimbal and that's about what I would expect. Uh, and we'll pull, well, it's, it, I'm glad that they put that red tab on there. It tells you that there is uh, some film, of protective film over the camera. But, you know, that's a standard uh, three axis gimbal. It looks like it's uh, mounted quite well and the camera is about what you would expect. Uh, you know, it's, it's not a, uh, it doesn't look like it has a big aperture on it, but that's not necessarily what you're looking for in this price range. Uh, so let's take a look. There is the battery compartment. Here's a battery right here. It says it's a 2950 milliamp battery, so uh, that's pretty good. I'm not sure what the flight time is, but I'm sure that's adequate. Uh, one thing that's typical about a lot of drones in this price range, I've noticed they come like this. You got this little foam piece on the end of the battery. That is to protect it while it's in shipping, so make sure you uh, 
take that off and then we'll line it up here and slide it in. You can see the connections there are on the top so we'll slide it in. Snaps right into place. Yeah so this is a typical uh, MJX style controller and uh, let me let's take it our first we're going to take a good look at these antennas. So one of the first things that I always look at is antenna. Are they functional or not? Often uh, some of these uh, bargain class drones the antenna are just there for looks, but in this case, both of these have wires in them. That means they're functional. That leads me to believe that we'll get uh, some good range out of this. And then these uh, bottom part, th these are just handles that you pull out. And uh, of course, your mobile device just goes right here, uh, slides in right there. And you always want the flat part of the antenna uh, facing the drone. So, uh, you know, if you were if the drone was up above you, you'd probably hold it like that so that flat part of the antenna is facing the drone. Uh, with your phone here, those are going to have to be pointed down. And uh, yeah, let's see, I, I'm trying to remember, yeah, th this is the speed switch, low, medium, and high. Uh, and then on the left hand side here, uh, takeoff and landing. Uh, and uh, then this is a return to home switch right here. Uh, Typical uh, MJX, that's how you unlock the props. In other words, get the props turning, unlock that, hit the takeoff button, the drone uh, takes off. Uh, and then this is the power button for the uh, controller itself. And uh, yeah, let's see here if we can find, yeah, there it is right there, USB-C. That's how you're going to charge the controller. And the other thing that I always look for in a controller is when it has an internal lithium battery like that, I find that they have more power and you do get a better connection. Uh, the control sticks, you know, they, they feel good. They're, they're, they don't screw or unscrew. They're on there uh, permanently. Uh, so, yeah, pretty simple controller. Oh, well, let's better look at the front here. Uh, this button to, uh, to uh, uh, start recording. Uh, this button right here to just take a picture. And this will move your uh, camera, uh, uh, the gimbal, up and down. So you look up and down with the camera. Uh, so that's about it with the controller. Okay, so I'm not going to bore you taking everything out of the bags, but what you have here is a uh, USB-A to USB-C cable and the ubiquitous uh, screwdriver that you get with a lot of these drones. And then here are uh, some spare props and uh, screws for those props. Uh, and then you also get... Uh, what, what I appreciate about MJX is they always include a nice big... Uh, manual and they always give you some decals too or some stickers. Uh, in fact, I'm going to pull that manual. That's the one thing we are going to pull out of the bag here. So yeah, you get both a quick start guide and a user guide, but but one of the things as uh, as an older guy I appreciate, I appreciate a big manual like this that, you know, things are in big letters. I can actually read it and uh, and see what the heck I'm doing. So well, okay, by my estimation, there's only one thing left to do. Uh, let's get this drone out in the field and uh, let's give it a shot. Uh, let's take it out. We'll, we'll give it a good uh, test fly. We'll try out the features and, uh, and see how well it does. And like I said, I am not looking for a three kilometer range like they're saying. I'm not going to fly this drone that far. But if we can get it out a kilometer or even close to that, I'm going to call that a big win. So uh, anyway, let's uh, quit messing around. Let's get this drone out and give it a flight. Hey, okay, we're out in the field with the uh, Bugs 18 Pro, and uh, I've got uh, an SD card installed so that we can uh, hopefully shoot some 4K 30 frames per second video. Uh, and uh, the batteries are fully charged. Uh, one of the big deals about this particular drone is they're saying it has a three kilometer range. This is a challenging Wi Fi environment here at Heroes Park. Uh, so this will be a good place to try it out. Uh, and I will also say it's a fairly mild day. It's in the low 70s, just a little bit of wind. It said maybe eight mile an hour gusts, something like that. I will have put that up on the screen for you. Uh, but anyway, let's quit messing around. Uh, let's get this bird in the air. Okay, let's fire this guy up. So it says to hold the button down for three seconds. We heard the uh, chimes there, so it's fired up. Same thing on the controller. And then uh, we've got lights on here that'll tell us when we're uh, connected. Uh, 
I should be, I, I should be, and I don't know if you can see it, I should be waiting for that light right above the drone there. Well, for whatever reason, I'm not seeing that, uh, that third light. So uh, I'm going to try and uh, do a compass calibration. That's both sticks down and to the right. And it says to do, I'm looking at the uh, light blinking on the back here. I can't tell. Yeah, it's kind of green and yellow. We're going to turn it three times uh, counterclockwise. And it looks like it's blinking the same color. So I'll give it one more. Well, I don't know. Then let's tip it up and we'll go three times. And I'm seeing the same blinking lights, so I don't know if we did a darn thing. Uh, okay, let's, uh, let's open up the app here and uh, make sure that we're connected uh, Wi-Fi to the drone. And the drone is connected uh, Wi-Fi to the phone, so we should be good to go there. Uh, let's open up the app, and it is the, uh, the X-Drone app. Uh, t -t -t does not appear. Yeah, we're not, we don't uh, use cellular data. Uh, it is not connected to the internet there. Uh, so let's find the X Drone app and click on that. And let's see if we can enter device. Flight interface. Yeah, and we have nothing. So I don't know what's going on here. Uh, <laughs> that is the, such a frustration of these kind of products. Uh, let me see. I'm gonna, just going to see if I can unlock the uh, props by pushing the unlock button here. Yeah, and we got nothing. Uh, so we clearly are not connected to this drone. As you can see, I've got nothing on the uh, FPV screen. Uh, don't know what's up with that. I see we have a solid light on the back now. Maybe I can try that uh, compass calibration again. Let's try that and see what happens. Both sticks down and to the right. Yeah, I just don't think we're uh, we're not. I just don't think we're connected to the. Uh, we're not connected to the drone at all. So I uh, don't know what's going on there. Hey, okay, I messed around for a few minutes there. My uh, controller was not matched to the drone, and I was struggling to get a connection. These are the kind of things that are so frustrating for a beginner. Uh, but if you find yourself in that situation, uh, you turn on the controller, hold this button down for three seconds, the start button, hold the return to home button down for three seconds, that puts it in pairing mode, then hold the button down on the drone for three seconds. It took a little bit, but it finally connected, and I don't know if you notice here, I have all three lights on here, the one that says the remote, the one that looks like a camera, and the one that looks like a drone. So the first thing we're going to do is do a gyro calibration, and that is both sticks down and to the right, and I should see uh, the, uh, I'm kind of shading that light here, we should see that light change. Yeah, it's blinking real fast now, and uh, when that goes solid, uh, that should mean that we have a, uh, a good, uh, yeah, and it's flashing again. So that means that we got a good gyro calibration. So now we're going to do a compass calibration, and that's both sticks down and to the right. And I am seeing what looks to me like uh, uh, both uh, green and yellow lights flashing, but we're going to turn it. Uh, there's one, two three and that didn't change those lights so I'll go one more yeah now they're both green so now I'm gonna tip it up and there's one two three and let's go four yeah and that did it the lights are solid now so we got a good compass calibration uh, so uh, let me start a screen recording here real quick and uh, We'll, uh, we'll get uh, connected to uh, the uh, Wi-Fi to the drone. So I'm going to go into my uh, settings here and go into Wi-Fi, and it's already connected. You can see there, yeah, unsecured network. So it automatically connected, which is good. That's what we want. Let's fire up the app, and that is the X-Drone app. Got that fired up. Let's enter device. And look at that, we have, uh, we have connection. It, I was, uh, I gotta be honest with you, that took me a few minutes to figure that out, why I couldn't get a connection. And if you look here, uh, I'm hoping you can see this in the sun. In fact, I'm gonna move the camera over in the shade. I think you'll be able to see it a little bit better. 
uh, if, I, if I hold this up close, but we have all four lights lit here. The first one is the controller. The second one, I'm not sure what that means. That always comes on. The third one there means you're connected to the drone. The fourth one, that little blue light, means that you have GPS. So uh, move the camera back here. Hopefully you were able to see that uh, on camera. And uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and take off here. And the first thing, the, the way we're gonna do that is uh, we're gonna push the unlock button here. Yeah, and that did it, that fired up the motors. And then this takeoff button on the top left. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, I was a little bit concerned there for a second. Uh, and the drone, you can see it there, it's kind of sinking down a little bit, but it's got optical flow. It's moving around just a little bit. Not too bad. I'm not touching the controls at all. Let's just see what it does here. It's kind of moving around just a little. Yeah, maybe it's going to go on a flight all of its own. So let's go ahead and make sure that we are in uh, 4K 30. Well, looks like we can. We need to change some things here. So maximum distance, we're going to flip that all the way up. Uh, well, it says 500 meters, so I don't know. They said this thing will go three kilometers, so I'm not exactly sure what 500 uh, meters is, and we want to move that height up to uh, maximum, which 120 is, is legal. Return to home altitude. Let's move that up to, uh, I don't know, just to be on the safe side. There's 31. That's going to be good enough. Uh, yeah, transmitter operation, we are in mode two, which is good. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, sensor status, now we don't need to do a calibration. Uh, yeah, so determine. Prompt if update the data. Okay, settings are okay. So it looks like for the camera settings, I need to press the button just below the red button on the right there. Yeah, that's not giving me anything. So let's go ahead and start recording. I'm going to use the recording button on the uh, controller here. And did it start recording? I got no idea. Let me uh, tap it on the app. The device has not been connected. Yeah, it says not connected now. Uh, so that's not good. Oh yeah, yeah, the, the camera light, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. The camera light is blinking here. So I don't know what that's about. Let's bring it back. Why is it not connected? I have no clue. Oh, there I'm able to get to the camera. I get, uh, I, I'm able to get into that uh, menu. Yeah, 4K30 is what we want. Uh, let's format the memory card. How about we do that? So yeah, it's still saying not connected, so I don't know what that's about. I'm going to go, uh, although we have FPV feed, uh, I'm going to check my uh, Wi-Fi connection again here real quick, just for the fun of it. Yeah, we're connected. Uh, yeah, and again, these are the kind of problems that will absolutely drive you bonkers. Device is not connected. We're connected to the drone. The uh, controller says it's connected to the camera. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to land it. We're going to start over again here. Well, we ended up in the grass there a little bit. That was the best I could do. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to cycle everything. Who knows what was happening there? Why the camera isn't connected? Good question. Okay, I'm going to fire it all back up again, and uh, this time let's we'll see if we can do the calibration uh, via the app because I'm sure it's going to want a compass calibration again. So we're going to fire up the controller, hold that button down for three seconds, and let's fire up the drone. Uh, and uh, I have uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it here. I have all the uh, lights lit up on the controller, so we should be good to go. Uh, again, I'm going to double check. Yeah, I am connected via Wi-Fi. That's good. Uh, let me go in and we're going to fire up that app again. Start recording again. I think that screen recording stopped. So anyway, we're going to fire up the uh, X-Drone app. 
and enter device and we have FPV standard mode it's showing that we're connected to the camera uh, let's uh, let's see if we uh, you know it just for the to be on the safe side I want to do another uh, compass calibration and I'm trying to remember where that was at here sensor status let's start calibration okay so uh, that page disappeared so I assume uh, we're calibrated let's uh, let's go into that camera menu again and I'm looking for where we uh, yeah so we're in 4k 30 uh, and, uh, and, and, oh, there you can uh, do the gimbal gyroscope calibration. Let's not start that. And you can roll adjust too, but let's, let's format the card. So I'm assuming that's formatted. Uh, and now it's saying not connected. Guys, I, I don't know what to say. Oh, no, look, there, I, I clicked the button and, uh, and it, uh, it says we're recording and the TF card is blinking, uh, so I'm going to say we're good. Get my antennas adjusted on this thing. One of the things about this kind of controller, if you set it down, it can flip these up. You need to make sure they're like that so you can get the flat part facing the drone. Let's unlock the motors. We're going to click that unlock button and we're going to click takeoff. And there it goes. This is a much, uh, little bit better takeoff this time. Well, it's sinking, and it's moving around a lot. Yeah, I'm, uh, it's, I can tell you this, uh, I'm, my hands are off the controls, so all those movements you see right now, those aren't exactly circular movements, but I, I kind of wanted to bring it in so we could take a look at it, but uh, I'm not sure that I trust it enough. I just don't think it's precise enough. I mean, it's uh, I'm I'm kind of hurting it rather than rather than flying it. So, uh, you know, that's just something. You know, on this kind of a drone, you're not going to expect it to be perfectly as stable as as you might see some other drones. But I'm going to try and drop the camera. Yeah, that worked pretty good. So uh, so let's drop the camera down a little bit more. And, uh, and we'll do a droney. We're in medium speed mode, and that's on the controller, uh, the, uh, the middle switch there, rather switch in the middle position. So reverse and up now. And you know what? It's a fairly quick little drone. I'm, uh, yeah, I was struggling. Yeah, it's moving to the side there. I, you know, I was trying to, trying to control it. And boy, I'm watching the drone move around a lot. It's, uh, it's not exactly uh, the steadiest thing. I can say my FPV feed is pretty good. It looks like about a 720p uh, FPV feed. But, and you can see the drone. I mean, I'm watching the drone move around there, and you can see it in the picture here as well. And hopefully we get some good video quality. Let's turn around. And you know what? It is respons responsive to controls. Like, I was able to do that yaw. Let's, uh, let's head straight. Let's, in fact... Let's grab a little more altitude, and yeah, it's, uh, let's get up about, uh, yeah, there's almost 30 meters high, 29 meters high, and uh, I'm going to see if I can straighten it out just a little. It, you know, again, it's, it's the, there is a little bit of lag in the controls. I'm going to go full stick forward now, so we're full forward. And is it going to tell us speed here? I do not see speed anywhere on the app here. We do have, if you look at the top there, we've got 19 satellites. And you can see the trees are starting to change color here, so hopefully we'll get some nice uh, video. And you know what? We got, uh, you know, knock on wood, we've got a good connection here. Let me see if I can turn it around, and I'm pointed straight at the drone. And as I turn it, that's often when you'll see trouble. We had a little, yeah, little blip on FPV there. But overall, it's okay. I can actually control the drone. So let's go back the other direction. And, uh, and again, it's not, there's nothing on here that tells me the speed. It's a very basic uh, 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 app. But I put it in high speed mode, and that's this switch in the middle. I pushed it clear to the right. Let's go full stick forward, and let's see. 
how fast this drone moves. And, uh, you know, I don't know if I'm seeing that big of a difference. Uh, and I'm, I'm watching the drone in the air. It's, it's not like it's pitched forward very, very far. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to put it in medium mode and see if I see any difference. And it's funny watching the drone move around. So there's medium speed. Yeah, and I can definitely say high speed is faster. Uh, so let's throw it back into high speed. I think high speed is where you're going to want to be most of the time. Okay, so uh, I am looking for battery info on this guy, and I guess, uh, you know, where is the battery meter? Yeah, I'm not seeing where it tells us how much uh, battery power you have in the drone, but what I'm going to do is I want to go, let's see how, you know, one of the big things that MJX is saying is that this drone has much more range than, uh, than previous models. So let's go, and it's, you know, as I look at the drone when it's closer to me, it looks a lot faster. I wish I could tell you how high it's, how, how fast it's going. So we're going to go, in fact, we want to grab some more altitude here. Let's give this thing, uh, and I see an aircraft, yeah, he's way off from us and way high up there. But I want to give this thing the benefit of the doubt. We're going to go up about 60 meters, maybe even more than that, because I want it to have a good, uh, shot at getting uh, getting some good uh, uh, signal here and let's go full stick forward let's go across the street and let's see if we can how far we can get out into the field here see if we can get behind the Walmart I'm telling you connection so far is good I'm 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 happy with what uh, with the connection I'm getting with this drone and that's the big thing about the bugs 18 pro is the connection the other thing that I'm going to tell you is the FPV the, the picture on the FPV looks good. Now, in this price range of a drone, am I looking for the kind of video that I'm going to get on a DJI drone? I absolutely am not. It's just you're not in this price range. This is uh, this drone right now is 200. And, yeah, we're starting to. Yeah, I'm, I I hit the stop button here. I'm froze on uh, on on the FPV screen. Tried to turn it a little. Yeah, I am, I am froze up on FPV, and that's at about 500 meters. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not even sure what to say there. Uh, let's see if we could get it into return to home mode to come home. I'm not seeing anything. So I'm going to hit return to home on the controller. And it's blinking. Let's see, I can't read that message at the top. The wind speed to ensure safe return. Oh yeah, it's coming back now. Okay, let's see if we can cancel that. And it did, it stopped. Okay, let's go forward again. Let's hit full stick forward again. I mean, there's virtually no wind. If it, if it was telling me that there was wind there, I don't, you know. I don't know. Yeah, now it's responding to yaw control again. So I don't know what that was. I, I just, I didn't have any control there for a little while. Yeah, it's, it's, it, you know, these controls are not the most precise. Yeah, it seems like it's stopping right at 500 meters. So I wonder if we have some kind of, oh, you know what? Was there a limitation? Let's go back into security. Yeah, 500 meters, that's what it is. So I wonder how you would change that. It's limiting us at 500 meters. So, okay, that's a, that's a great thing. So we're getting a solid 500 meters. Uh, I wonder what default means. Yeah, default is 15. No, we don't want that. So yeah, on the app, I can't set it more than 500 meters. So I guess it really doesn't have a 300 kilometer range. But, but you know what? 500 meters on a drone like this, is good. Yeah, and I was trying to hit the, uh, trying to yaw there, and I'm not getting, uh, I'm not getting any response from the drone. Okay, we're gonna hit return to home again. And let's see if it starts coming back to us. And it does, I wonder, let's cancel that again. 
And I bet you when it's at that limit, yeah, when it's at the limit, it freezes the controls. That's what it does. I'll be darned. Uh, so, yeah, if anybody knows how you can increase that, I've turned it up to the maximum 500 meters. I forgot about that. We looked at that earlier. Uh, but let me tell you, we got a solid connection here. This is, uh, this is great. Uh, I, in, in, in one of the big bugaboos of some of these lower priced drones is that Wi-Fi connection and uh, boy no complaints on this guy. So let's start bringing it down in altitude as we come back. So I am full stick forward in high speed mode and I'm dropping in altitude as I go. And the drone is getting closer to us here. I'm standing under that picnic shelter there. Got in the shade a little bit. And there's the drone. I'm looking at it right in front of us here. Okay. Let's uh, let's see if let's see what tricks this guy has. So, uh, and I don't even know. I wish I could tell you how much battery power I have. There is nothing that I see on this app that tells me this. Oh yeah, there. Hold it. I take that back. Look at the top. The picture of the drone. There's four segments on the drone, and so looks like we got three quarters of a battery. So I mean, the battery's holding up well. We've spent a lot of time at uh, at full throttle. Oh boy, I'll tell you what. Look at it. I mean, you watching it? My hands are completely off the stick, and it's it's going into that classic rotation mode. Let's see if it settles down. And it did. I, I did some, uh, you know, it just doesn't, I did, I hit the brakes real hard and that definitely threw it into a little bit of a tizzy. So, uh, so you're going to want to bear that in mind, you know, close in flying is not going to be, in fact, I'm going to put it in low speed mode here and let's see if we can get a little better control. Yeah, it's, it, it's no different than when we first took off. It's just not, you know, it's still coming at me there. We raise it in height here a little bit. Okay, uh, let's go out and let's see if we can, uh, it, it, well, let's click and see what kind of tricks we have. Yeah, we've got a follow me function. So I'm gonna bring the, uh, I'm gonna take the drone uh, out into the field and, uh, and we have point of interest are the two things we had. I thought this guy offered waypoints, but maybe not. So it might just be those two. So let's back it up. And, uh, and I'm going to get out into the field out here. And we'll try that follow me function. So the follow me on this drone is going to be GPS, in other words. So I'm clicking on follow me and it says uh, slide to the right. So it is. So the drone turned to me. And uh, i got to be honest with you, I'm a little nervous, but it is following me. It's not, you guys aren't seeing it in camera, barely. Now I'm in range of the camera. And the drone is, uh, you know, it's kind of going down. Let me, let me see if I can raise it up in altitude a little bit. Yeah, that's better. Uh, but what, I, what I'm gonna tell you is this GPS, let's see if we can back it up. I'm walking towards the drone and we can. So, uh, you know, GPS follow me. Like I said, trying to keep yourself in center of frame, you're gonna kinda of have to use the controls to do that. But you know what, it works. Uh, I was out here uh, yesterday, or day before yesterday, with the uh, Autel Nano Plus, and trust me, this tracking <laughs> works every bit as good as that as uh, tracking on that Autel drone did. Okay, so we're gonna click on that little, on the far left there, that little menu button again stop follow me so it stopped and uh, and let's see if we can do uh, if we can do an orbit I think I need to bring it above me and I think what it'll do is when I hit orbit I think it'll back up so let's hit uh, point of interest yeah an orbit for rotate clockwise so 10 meters in front of the drone so so yeah, I didn't, in, in fact, I needed to be 10 meters in front of it to be the center of the uh, point of interest. But there it goes. Let me drop that camera down a little. 
but it's still in a perfect orbit here. Not a terribly fast orbit. Okay, so I'm center of frame. Let's stand right here and let's see how well it holds. Yeah, so I would ha I, I kind of have to move to say center of frame. Yeah, but that works. Okay, I'm looking at the battery meter. It's still telling me that we're at three quarters battery on the drone. Uh, which I kind of am struggling with a little bit, but you never know. Okay, let's take it out of that mode. And there's headless mode. Now, headless mode, I'm not sure I understand why you need that on a GPS drone. In other words, uh, it's always going to go when you, directly away from you in headless mode. So let's just try it just for the fun of it. Uh, drone will enter headless mode. And so what I should be able to do is, as I push the stick forward, I should be able to yaw and it's just going to keep going that direction. No, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, what I'd hoped. Yeah, and it's kind of going in a big circle now. I'm holding the stick straight down. So that's not headless mode as I understand it so yeah low battery okay so it tells us we're in low battery now uh, so we're going to take it out of headless mode headless mode as I understand it would be that the drone uh, if you fly it directly away from you well let's try that we're in low battery but we're still okay I can see the light is blinking on the back of the drone telling us we're in low battery so I'm going to put it in uh, in fact, let me face the drone towards me. Maybe. It, it, I mean, it's, I'm, I, I'm trying to yaw around and the drone is in forward flight. Yeah, I, it's moving around pretty much on its own here, folks. I don't know. Uh, okay. That was, that was a, so now on a left hand yaw, that was a little better. Okay. We're going to try headless mode one more time. Headless mode. And I should be able to push the stick forward. The drone should have gone straight forward and it's going sideways and down. Uh, I push the stick straight up. Okay, let's pull the stick straight back. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what that is, guys. It's not headless mode as I've ever, as I've ever understood it. So, not sure what that's about. Let's just take it out of that. Let's uh, let's get it out in the field. Let's see, uh, 300 meter range is all now. So, let's get it out here, a ways. Let's put it back into. Well, the heck, let's throw it into high speed. And boy, I could tell an immediate difference in the drone. And I'm sure you guys could too. I'm trying to gain an altitude here. And uh, then we'll hit, uh, we'll hit return to home. In fact, I, I wonder if we can get it to go into low battery return to home. Okay, I'm picking that camera back up. I'm going to back it up here. And uh, I don't want to go too high because I want, I was hoping to get it to kick into uh, uh, low battery return to home. And as you can see, I, I mean, well, you see the drone moving around there. My hands are completely off the sticks and the drone is moving around. Well, let's go ahead and hit return to home. I'm going to do that. Uh, let's try that on the, uh, on the controller. I was going to say on the app. So I, I think that bottom one, uh, if you're looking on the left hand side, means that it would land directly and the top one means return to home. But I'm not 100% sure. Well, heck, let's try it. What the heck? It's not going to hurt anything. I'm going to move it forward just a little. And let's try return to home. Yeah, return to the home point and land. Okay. There we go. So I slid that slider. And let's. it should rise to its uh, return to home height, which was 31 meters. It's at 29, so I'm going to say that's, uh, that's probably good enough. And it is coming back. Let's see if we can drop the camera down. 
Yeah, now it's telling me low battery, so I think that's when it would have kicked itself into auto return to home. Yeah, not connected. I'm trying to point the, uh, that's not unusual on a Wi-Fi drone. Yeah, that's as far down as I can point the camera. So, uh, I'm going to pick the camera up a little bit. And hopefully you can see that. Yeah, you'll be able to see it. Yeah, you know, this, this is going to be fairly accurate. Yeah, and look at it it's slowing down before it lands. And uh, yeah, it's going in the grass, but uh, yeah, not bad. I'm not complaining there. Okay, I mean, it's probably, I'm going to say five, six feet off of the pad. Uh, so normally you would, you know, as it comes back, you'd land it yourself. Okay, let's stop recording. That is important on these drones. I'm going to stop recording. And uh, let me, uh, I'm going to shut everything down and then, uh, and then I'll put it up in the air again one more time and we'll take some pictures. I've got another battery, so we might as well use that battery up, right? Let's take some pictures and see how it does uh, with photography. Okay, we've got the app fired up here and uh, when we're doing a screen recording, uh, let's, uh, let's do another auto takeoff. And again, I'm going to just press the unlock button on the controller. Fires up the uh, props, and then uh, the uh, uh, land takeoff button on the top uh, left, and it does a little auto takeoff. Let's just let it. Let's just see what it does. It's sinking a little bit. Yeah, it's it's coming down. Is it going to touch down? No, maybe. No, it doesn't quite touch down. It's maybe a foot off the ground or so. It's not very high. Uh, let's go ahead. I want to one more time. I want to look and see if there is something uh, that I can do with that maximum distance, and and there just isn't that I see. Transmitter operation. I am not seeing any. Oh, I, I something else. I see you can you can turn off GPS if you want, and you can fly it in Addy mode. I would uh, not suggest that. Uh, Open novice mode by default. Turn it off to custom mode. So, yeah, that's beginner mode. Let's turn it off. Oh, and look at that. It reset everything. So, uh, let's move that orbit back up. Let's move uh, maximum distance up to the maximum 120 meters in height. Return to home altitude. I needed about 30 meters. So, we're going to, so, we, so I had to reset all that stuff. Uh, and it's changing those settings now. Uh, settings are okay. Uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, and move up. And I'm seeing, I'm looking along the top there to see if I'm missing anything. Let's click on that top. See if I, now I just wanted to see if there was some kind of pull down there, or something. Uh, but let's not start recording. Let's let's go up, and let's see. And you know what? Uh, I hate to say it, but the drone. It's responding better this time, so I don't know. In fact, I'll tell you what, guys. I'm going to bring it in here. I, I changed my mind here. We're going to start recording because it, this second battery, it seems to be more stable. Let me see if I can bring it in and be more comfortable bringing it in. Well, I say that, and then as soon as I let off, it starts moving around. So I'm going to let off the sticks right now and let's see how it moves around. And you can see it kind of moving around. Yeah, it's, it's still not the most stable thing in the world. Okay. Let me bring it in here. I'm going to put it in high speed mode. And I'm going to drop that camera down. And we're going to do another droney here. That's probably too far. A little bit of lag in that camera adjustment. Okay, reversing up now. And you know what? It's fairly powerful. This is a brushless motor drone. And, and you know, it, it is. I mean, I see the drone going off to the left. It's, you know, the controls. And boy, is it moving around there. My hands are completely off the sticks now. And it's going in a big old orbit. So any kind of uh, drastic moves that you make with the with the sticks really throws it into a tizzy and we've got 19 satellites okay let's uh let's go across the other corner of the park and we'll take some pictures over there and again we are in uh and it's weird like i said i i feel almost like i'm uh 
the, the, the controls just, I'm just going to say, well, well, I've seen a lot worse as far as lag and stuff. They're not 100% uh, accurate in that, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, you, you just, you do feel uh, a tendency that you're hurting the drone around a little bit. Okay, I'm going to stop recording now. And I did that on the app. And let's take a picture. We're going to push that picture button. And it says it took a TF photo, so that means it saved it to the card. And uh, let's uh, let's turn around the other way. Let's see if we can get another picture here. Uh, I'm also, again, I'm still interested in the connection here. And I'm telling you uh, of these kinds of drones. And like I said, this is a challenging Wi-Fi environment here. I don't know if you guys saw my recent video with the uh, Hubson Zeno Mini SE, and I mean, it was dropping out all over the place. Uh, this is a $250 bargain drone, and it's doing just fine. Okay, let's take another picture. And so we take a picture of the Costco. We'll see how that looks. Oh, the other thing I want to mention is, while there is a little bit of fisheye in the lens on this thing, at this price range, I'm okay with that. But it's got a pretty darn good horizon, too. Pretty stable horizon as well. Uh, so that's another good thing. Well, in fact, let's, uh, let's grab some altitude. Let's see if we can cross over here. And, uh, and let's, let's, let's just go on a little bit of a, a flight here. I, like I said, we know we can't go over 500 meters. It's restricted to that. Uh, I, I'm getting it up high so that, we, uh, so that we give it as good a chance as we can. And then I'm moving full stick forward right now. We're going to go directly across the street. And, uh, and we'll see if we can get some more pictures over here. So you guys are just going to see this on the screen recording right now. We'll, we'll, we'll start a uh, recording to the uh, SD card on our way back. Let's see, we're out 300 meters. Let's see if we can yaw around here. Let me tell you, that's as far as you're going to want to fly a drone like this. If you can fly a drone like this solidly for 500 meters, and we've shown that you can, uh, that's great. Okay, we're going to take a picture here. Uh, and you can kind of see all the development that's going on over there. I, yaw just to, I didn't want to yaw quite that far, but let's take another picture there. And, uh, yeah, let's go out here a ways and see how we do. And, again, I've, I've got a good straight shot at the drone. We're about, I'm picking up some altitude. We were about 60 meters high. Let's get it up about 70 or so. 69, there's 72. And it's going to go right out to that 500 meter limit, no problem. There you can see uh, Keith Bird Memorial Park. Yeah, 508 we got it to, and that's it. It's not going to go any further than that uh, because that's the limit set in the drone. And just as I suspected, so I'm going to have to back up to get, so I tried to yaw there and it won't because of that limit. But let's back it up a little bit. Okay, and now I bet I'll get yaw back. So what I, yeah, and I do. So what I thought was a connection issue is just simply a limitation in the software. There is a, if you're looking straight ahead about the center of the screen, that's a new Dutch Brothers or Dutch Bros copy. Let's take a picture. Uh, you know, I'm looking at the scroller here on just to the left of the, uh, uh, the record and, uh, and picture button. Let's see if that is telephoto, is digital telephoto. No, that, that adjusts the camera. So that's just a manual way to adjust the camera. I thought maybe that might be telephoto. Uh, I'm going to look one more time at the, uh, at the uh, 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 camera menu here, just to see if we, see if we missed anything here that we might want to try. And, uh, you know, those gimbal adjustments are all good. You can adjust brightness and saturation. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's kick the saturation up a little bit more. Let's put it up to 40 and see, uh, see what we see there. And, uh, yeah, ISO sensitivity. It's got automatic white balance. You, you've got some, so, so you can adjust white balance here. You've got several different selections there. Ah, on a bargain drone, that's something. Okay, let's get out of there. I'm going to start recording now. 
And, uh, and we're going to turn around and fly the other way. I'm telling you, boys, I'm impressed. I am impressed. Let's see if we can just go straight down the street here. And we'll go back into the field across there. And in high speed mode, I wish this thing had a speedometer on it so we could see how fast we're going. Hey, so I just noticed something. I'm looking at the bottom of the screen there. And I am seeing a little uh, a, a, a slider that may be, uh, may be digital zoom. So let's see if we can... Uh, well, in fact, let's go further forward and get out over the field. And I'm going to see if I can zoom in on the Walmart over there. Just noticed that down there, guys. So, yeah, we're over the field. Let's, let's uh, move that slider. I'm going to click on the arrow. Yeah, that, I can't get that to do anything, so... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm touching on it, and it's not lit up. So maybe that's something that's just not available on this drone. Okay, let's move on out, and uh, and we'll take this guy out there a ways, and then we'll hit return to home, and we'll call this a flight. And, uh, yeah, you know, because it's kind of moving lateral to us, we're not getting that much further out there distance wise. Now we are, it's getting a little further out there. And again, you know, the horizon looks pretty good. Yeah, this, it, there's definitely some fisheye effect on this camera. It's not the most expensive camera out there, but, uh, but it looks good. Well, there's that Walmart. So we're at 450 meters. Let's call that good. I'm gonna hit return to home on the controller this time. And uh, yeah, it's giving us a wind speed warning, but there is little to no wind here. Yeah, so it's coming back. It's not turning around, but it's coming back and it's coming back at its current altitude. So we'll let it do that. And then let's just see uh, how far it gets, uh, you know, how, how close it gets to the landing pad here. Yeah, and it's coming right back, crossing 10 mile road there. Uh, geez, guys, I'm pretty happy. Uh, you know, I had some initial problems getting connected there. I had to actually, uh, usually when you get a drone, it's automatic, it's already connected to the controller. In this case, it wasn't, and that was the problem that I was having. And here comes that drone. I'm looking almost right into the sun to see it. And we should be coming straight down now. Let's drop that camera down to see where we're at. And that's as far down as that camera will drop. It won't, uh, it will not uh, uh, go 90 degrees down. So I just want to make sure the drone is not going to land on the, on the top of the uh, structure here or anything like that. And it's going to be pretty close. I'm picking up the camera. It's going to be just, yeah. I don't know, hopefully the, uh, let's see. Yeah, you probably didn't catch that because it's so close. Let me lower the uh, DJ action too. So it's just off of the pavement here. Uh, and it, got, it came down really fast and then it got well, just a few inches of the ground and it slowed down and then dropped down in the grass. And again, uh, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to move it back into medium speed. I don't want to leave it in high speed. I'm going to stop recording right now so we don't get a uh, corrupted file. And uh, let me get everything shut down and we will do a quick conclusion. Hey, okay, uh, the MJX Bugs 18. Uh, you know what? I'm going to pronounce this guy a winner. Uh, the only issues I had was that initial connection. Uh, that's because the remote was not bound to the drone. Uh, it took me a few minutes to figure that out once I got that figured out. And the instructions are in the manual. Very easy to do. It worked perfectly. It's got a good, nice, clear manual. The only thing I've seen in the manual is sometimes it'll tell you it takes 25 minutes to do something. What they mean by that is 25 seconds. So sometimes when you see it says minutes, they mean seconds, really. And they're talking about when you're doing the connection.
The compass calibration was very, very straightforward and worked. I did it both ways. I did it the manual way with the sticks and I did it via the app. Both ways worked just fine. Uh, I did the, uh, the gyro calibration was very easy. Both sticks down and to the left and uh, the light started blinking real fast. As soon as it quit blinking, it said that that calibration was done. Uh, I, of course, I haven't looked at the video off of the SD card yet, but it looked good on the FPV feed, so I suspect it's gonna be just fine. Am I expecting it to be you know, the kind of quality that we see off of uh, an Autel drone or a DJI drone? No, but if it's good, steady footage, good, clear, steady footage, uh, I'm, I'm happy with that in this price range of a drone. Now, they're claiming a three kilometer range on the app. I couldn't adjust it any more than uh, uh, 500 meters. So it may very well fly farther than that, but 500 meters is what it was limited to on the app. So if there's a way to change that and somebody knows about it, let me know in the comments, please. I didn't see any way to change that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, it flew good. I mean, you know, you saw that some movement and stuff. It's not, you know, it's not the steadiest. The controls are not super precise like you would find on a more expensive drone. But you know what? I never felt like I was out of control. I always felt like I was in control with the drone. And again, the connection was really good. And this is an area here where th this a lot of drones stumble because this is, uh, there's, there's a lot of Wi-Fi interference here. And this guy did fine. So that says something about what MJX has done uh, with, uh, with their Wi-Fi connection on this drone. Uh, so, yeah, I guess that's about it. Uh, I'm going to put an a, a affiliate link to Banggood where you can buy this down below. Uh, I, when I looked today, it was about 250 bucks. If they have a discount code or something, I'll put that in there too. Uh, but if you're just looking for a starter drone, something to get your feet wet with, yeah, this MJX Bugs 18, it's a good one. Uh, so anyway... This is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out. And if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Most of all, I really, really do appreciate you taking the time to look at this video. And of course, we'll see you on the next one. The MJX Bugs 18. See you guys later.